Hi, I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor of Sky and Telescope Magazine here at 2014 Northeast Astronomy Forum, better known as NEAF. Right now, I'm at the Stellaview booth speaking with Vic Maris, the President and Founder of Stellaview. For more than 15 years, the company has been handcrafting quality telescopes. But you know, if I really want to ask somebody to tell me about the company, I've got the guy right here. Vic, you want to tell viewers a little bit about Stellaview's history? I'd be happy to. Um, Stellarview really is a culmination of what some people like to refer to as a hobby. <laughs> but as we all know, amateur astronomy is not a hobby, it's an obsession. And so when you're obsessed like we are with astronomy and with making fine instruments, you know, it's, it's something that's hard to convey to other people. So back in the late 1960s, um, I made my first refractor. I got the lens kit together, I walked around the barrel forever, and created a 5-inch F15 Fraunhofer refractor. For yourself? For myself. And that started my passion with astronomy. And I was very lucky because, um, you know, Tom Cave was the president of our club, the LAAS. Uh, I got to work with people like uh, Jacobson at Coulter Optical Company. And these people mentored me in uh, making really high-end optics. Now, from there, I went off and had a career. And when I retired, I thought to myself, what do I want to do in retirement? And I thought this, I thought, you know, you can get telescopes, you can buy telescopes, but can you buy truly handcrafted, highly accurate telescopes? That's a different story. And so we set a mission and a vision for Stellarview that we were going to make telescopes that I would want to own and use. And that started this endeavor, this adventure, um, into this entire business venture of Stellar View Telescopes. Which is your retirement hobby. My retirement <laughs> obsession. Obsession. And you can ask my wife, uh, it is definitely an obsession because I'm there seven days a week having a lot of fun. Having a lot of fun handcrafting these telescopes. That's great. Well, let's tell viewers a little bit about what we're looking at here. Well, right now what we're looking at is a telescope that was reviewed by a real expert in the astronomical world. Some, somebody I actually know occasionally. You actually shave him occasionally. Yeah. Uh, this is our Stellar View SVR 102T, and it is the sharpest four inch apochromatic telescope we can make. Um, the nice thing about this telescope is that when you buy this instrument, you will get the interferometric test report that we do after we complete the lens assembly. So you will know exactly how well this telescope performs and you've got bragging rights. Because every lens that we create has at least a strill ratio of 0.95. Now those people who know about optics know that if you're beyond 0.95 strill, you have a lens that is essentially perfect. And so between 0.95 and 0.99 is, a, is as good as it gets. Let me offer a little editorial comment here for viewers. It is true that I reviewed this telescope in Sky and Telescope magazine a few months ago, and using this telescope for months, I will have to say it is one of the finest four-inch refractors I've ever looked through. It really is a superb optical instrument, but there's a lot of other features about it that make it very interesting as well, and Vic, I'll let you continue. Well, you know, Thanks, Dennis. I really appreciate that. Um, what we do is we have options. Uh, you can put a two. It comes with a two and a half inch Stellar View rack and pinion dual speed focuser. You can upgrade to a feather touch focuser if you'd like for this telescope. Um, we have uh, now optional field flatteners for photographic use, including reducer flatteners that are large, large aperture. So this telescope is a stunning visual, superplanetary visual telescope, but also an excellent imaging telescope. Right. People can see it's got the carbon fiber tube. Yep. Um, it's got a very long retracting lens cap, or dew cap, I should say. Uh -huh. uh, precision machine metal throughout, right. right down to the metal dust cap that screws on in the front. And the whole telescope weighs, what's, what's the weight on the whole instrument by itself? This telescope weighs about 10 pounds. This is the carbon fiber version. Now, some visual users prefer aluminum. So we also make this telescope with an aluminum tube, same lens, same optical test, same performance, but in aluminum, and that one weighs about 12 pounds. Uh, different people have different preferences. What we're finding is that most people want a, as light a telescope as possible. 
the carbon fiber tube is extremely light and uh, works very well for astro imaging. Actually, to bring up the fact that it's light, easy to travel with, when you retract the dew cap and when you unscrew the focuser, the whole tube is short enough to fit inside of carry-on luggage for airplanes. Airline carry-on size. Yeah, so you can actually yeah. transport this very easily. That's one of the features that we designed into this telescope. The three-inch feather touch focuser on threads right here, and that the lens shield retracts, now it can fit into an airline carry-on case. Yep. If you travel with a telescope, if you want to go down to the southern hemisphere, you know, and, and see the Southern Cross and the Magellanic Clouds, you can do it with a stunning visual telescope and you can carry it on because you do not want to check a telescope in I luggage. Know. I agree with that. They have gorillas down there, you know, <laughs> that actually will destroy these things. Right. So uh, by doing that, you can safely transport this telescope anywhere in the world. Um, bring with you just a, you're actually bringing with you a stunning experience. Yeah. There's a couple of nice things about the focuser here. You've got a nice arrangement for being able to rotate the focuser, put the knobs where you want it. And you've also got, and this is rather unusual, you've got three lockdowns on the compression collar for the eyepieces or the diagonals. Tell me a little bit about the mount and the tripod. Really oh, beautiful looking piece of yeah, equipment. Yeah, this is something new that we invented in our shop. Um, you know, that's the thing about having a passion in this hobby is the fact that you get to make this really cool stuff. And we had made another tripod for our, our 130 Apo, and then everybody wanted to put our 160 Apo on that tripod. So I decided to make a mount on steroids. This is a beautiful cherry wood tripod. Um, we have a local cabinet maker that makes the wood parts for us, and then we CNC machine all of the heavy metal parts out of uh, 6061 T6 aluminum. This particular design is something that I came up with this year. Uh, you turn a lever up and the, uh, the three tracks move up, the leg closes in. It goes from 42, uh, 32 to 48 inches. But, once again, since we make these in our shop, if someone needs a custom tripod that goes even higher, we can extend the column. So it's nice being able to produce these things here in the U.S. and to produce them with quality, but be able to modify them as the customer requires. And of course, we have our massive M150 mount. You could mount two 160s side by side on this. This thing just glides around the sky very, very smooth. And so we're very happy with that. It's, it meets a specific niche for that visual observer who really wants to have a telescope with a mount that gets out of the way, that allows him to just enjoy the universe gliding around the sky. Let me interject what may be the obvious, but where you brought out in the beginning, you're a telescope user, you built these to use them yourself. You know when you make equipment, whether it's gonna suit an observer's needs. You know, when something needs to be smooth, it has to be smooth. It's really exactly. a nice way of having the person building the telescopes being a user and knows what the equipment needs to be like. Thank you, that is very true, and uh, you know, it, it, nothing is more frustrating than having a mount that sticks when you're trying to go from object to object. And so our goal here was to get the mount out of the way so that the observer can enjoy it. Those same kind of thoughts went into creating our 130 Apo triplets, which are new this year, and it's an interesting thing. There are users who like airspace lenses, there are users who must have an oil space lens vice versa. Since we're actually polishing these lenses in our own optical shop, we decided to offer both. Really? So now if someone wants to have a 130 Apo triplet and they really want an airspace lens, we have it. If they really want an oil space lens version, we have it. The optical accuracy again, 0.95 steril or higher. So these optics are essentially perfect with either version. Right. You just get the one you want. 130 millimeter aperture, what's the F ratio? On the oil spaced Apo triplet, it's F7. On the air space Apo triplet, it's F6.6. Performance is the same. Uh, so we're, we're really enjoying producing these right now, and we will be producing a video on our website that shows the entire process of creating these optical uh, objectives. All right. You know, you can tell me a little bit about this finder because that's oh. interesting for a finder. We've got a dual speed focuser and... Yeah, well, this is being used as a finder and it's quite a super finder, as you might imagine. This is actually a 60 millimeter APO, which we're ju we just introduced today at the show. Really? So it is a, a teeny tiny F5.5 uh, 60 millimeter APO telescope that you can throw in your suitcase or you can use it here as a finder 
you really want the world's best finder, or you can use it as an optical guide scope. You plug in a, a, a guide camera and, and while you uh, shoot through the uh, main telescope. So this is kind of fun. You can use it as a guide scope, a finder scope. You can throw it in a suitcase, take it with you on vacation. Um, and it is a 60 millimeter apochromatic telescope. We are now developing a 0.8 reducer flattener, so you can even use this as an extremely wide field imaging scope in its own right. So I notice this has a rotating back so you can align a camera or your diagonal. It's got multiple clamps for the uh, draw tube. It's really nice and you said the dual speed focuser and you've even got a bracket up here for a finder. Yeah, we do. And so you put a diagonal in here and you put an eyepiece in here. The images are stunning. Uh, you know, in the old days, you used to have to buy an extremely long 60 millimeter refractor because you were using achromatic optics. With apochromatic optics, we can shrink that down to f5.5 and you can get this enormous wide field of view or borrow it and pop the power up. Uh, so, you know, what we've done is we've really shrunk the old classic achromatic refractors that we all looked at the issues of sky and telescope okay. and dreamed about. Excellent. So you're saying you're introducing this at the show here today? This is being this is brand new. We are interested in introducing this at the show today. All right. You also have a piece of astrophotography equipment that you're introducing, right? Actually, yeah, we introduced it last year. Okay. Um, and they've been doing very well. Uh, that's our cue over here. Let's take a look. All right. So, Dennis, this is our SVQ100. It's a quad. It's our first quad. And the goal behind creating this telescope was to get rid of all of the issues associated with astrophotography that new users have to go through. Field flatteners, spacings, all of those problems. This is a plug and play scope. You, very, you, you basically attach your camera, focus, and begin imaging. So it's a four element. It's a four element. 100 using, millimeter aperture. It's 100 millimeter F5.8. 5.8. So it has a 580 millimeter focal length very wide field telescope, but it is short, so you can carry it on a plane, which is very important if you want to image down in the Southern Hemisphere, or if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, to image in the Northern Hemisphere. Or if you're in Massachusetts and you want to image in California. Exactly. Right. Um, what's wonderful about this telescope is we sell it to a user, and within 24 hours, we're starting to see images. It's just that fast, and we're getting lots of images taken with this telescope, they're all over the internet, and uh, it's just such an easy telescope to use. It really demystifies astrophotography. How big is the imaging circle? The imaging circle is 48 millimeters, but we have tested this with larger cameras, and it's worked quite well. So it's an extremely flat field. Our original goal was to make a telescope that would compete with other telescopes that were smaller in aperture that would work with a full-frame camera. We certainly exceeded that goal. In, uh, in terms of the field flatness that this delivers uh, and the optical quality overall. And the, the, again, the beauty of it is it's plug and play. So this is a great scope for people who want to image with DSLRs or astronomical CCD cameras. You bet, yeah, uh, full frame DSLRs, CCD cameras, and uh, we have all the adapters that come with it, so uh, it's ready to go. Sounds like you're having a really great time here at NEEF, showing everybody all this new equipment. You know, that's the thing I love about this. After all of this effort and all this work that we put into it and crafting something like this, you get to come here and show it to people and you get to watch their eyes light up. You know, that's what makes it all worth it. All right. Well, listen, I want to thank you very much for telling me all about this equipment. If viewers want to have some more information about these telescopes, where can they go? They can go to our website, uh, stellarview.com. S-T-L-L-A-R-V-U-E dot com. .com. .com. I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor of Sky and Telescope Magazine here at the 2014 NEEF.